Someone call to order 544. Seconded. Our third. Here we go. Fourth. <laughs> So some of um on my agenda is kind of like it'll be like meshed in from last month so I can just kind of like briefly talk about it and then update it because I have updates from it um since the time has passed. So um first and second grade has had their two back to back uh weekends so they've had two games um both home and they're actually all going to be home games which I'm learning because it's my new first season of basketball. Uh, the first one went good. The second week, last weekend, thank you, Steve, for covering for me. I got great oh, feedback no. from uh, from everybody. There was just that little mishap with the scoreboard, which I think is going to be taken care of. Um, and the kids are amped up. It was, it's like, it was great. The first game, it was tied at the end and we actually had to go into overtime and it was like as exciting as a high school basketball game and it was it was great um so that's going really great the coaches are awesome they're so helpful i really don't have to do much as, as far as on their part which helps me out a lot um that was number one uh the fitness challenge i had only a few people um like actually sign up for it. Um, and one person, she did great. And she sent me like, uh, she would take like a screenshot of like her workouts and she would send them to me weekly or whatever she thought of it. Um, so I bought like a nice little water bottle, like those motivational water bottles. I don't know, Diane, have you seen them like on Amazon? It's like drink more water, you can do this and you like fill it up and drink it. So I got uh, that as a small prize for her. She hasn't picked it up yet. So um, she was excited about that. So that was fun. Um, I'm thinking of adding one more pickleball night um, once basketball is over. But I'm also thinking of replacing or putting a pause on adult basketball. Um I'm having a lot of trouble with adult basketball. So some of the troubles I'm having is people are, I got a call um, about last week. Uh, people are being disrespectful to in the bathrooms. Um, and another week they're not, not leaving on time and kind of like trying to stay and linger to like 845, which is too late because the janitors want to leave. So um, I've been randomly showing up because it's a lot of people that are new and it's not the usual crew. Um, and the usual crew that's been doing it for years are not the people who are causing trouble. So um, I talked to Jeff Mish and he's really, he's actually, he's pretty upset um, with how the building was left this past week. So I've put a pause on it for this week and just canceled it um, just to try to wrap my mind around to see what I can do better to have them be more respectful without me being here kind of babysitting because Christopher is here. So um, that's something that we can revisit or if you guys have any thoughts about that, um, I could easily fill it with pickleball, e like easily fill another take it away and put pickleball in there. But I also feel bad for the 10 guys who've been coming for years and just play come and play pickup basketball and don't bother anybody. So I'm not really sure what to do on this part on this one. Um, I don't know. Does anyone have any thought? Oh, Jim. So make no, a I register online if they want to play. So that what? way we have their name their address, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And if they um, do anything that is outside the bounds of what we consider normal and respectful, they're gone. And Chris doesn't have to confront them. I mean, I did that. I sent a, it was kind of like, um, I mean, it was a really long email of expectations 
even down to parking, um, to facility use, to everything. And it got better for like a week, like two weeks. And then I got a call from Jeff. So. So what I'm thinking is they have to sign up online. So we have all of their information. Okay. And then I'll go sit with Christopher for a couple of weeks. And if they haven't signed up online, they cannot play. Okay. And that way we'll have all the information we need. And if they come and they cause problems, we have all their info and we'll trespass them. Okay. That way they can't come back. Okay. That's easy. Anybody Just, else? you know, make sure you put it all over social media and send out an email to the list saying, from now on, you have to sign up or you will not be able to play. And, you know, maybe we'll get like a board that says, if you haven't signed up online, you cannot play. I mean, that's pretty much what I'm doing doing right now with Pickleball. If they don't, if they haven't signed up through this app, I turned people away last week because they weren't signed up and I don't have the space. So, I mean, they're great about it. Um, and they're not the ones, you know, that I'm having trouble with. So um, I'll send out an email because I have most of, I have most people's, at least their email information. So I'll just send out an informative email about that and we'll resume next week and hopefully it will be better. Um, and then go from there. Um, next. So the 5k that was, I was still working on it back when I wrote this agenda. So, um, it's officially launched as of today. Like I said earlier, um, I already have six registrants, um, I have the t-shirt draft drafted with one-way printing. They're going to do the printing of the t-shirts for us. I'm still waiting because I have about four large sponsors that I'm hoping will come through. So I don't want to get the t-shirts printed too soon because I would like to have, if say L.L. Bean is one that I'm waiting on, if L.L. Bean comes through and gives me $1,000 or $2,000, that's going to cover the cost of the t-shirts. I can put their name on wherever and it's great. So I'm holding off. I have a good relationship with one way and I have, I have a window of time to work with. So they'll do, you know, the, the printing of the shirts where it's not like stressing them out as far as crunch time, but yet I'll have them in time because essentially what I'd like to do is the night, Actually, it'd be the morning before I'll be here at the elementary school giving out bibs and people who have wanted a T-shirt. Um, I'll give them to them the day before because that's what they do like in real 5Ks. So I wanted to make it as real of a 5K as possible. So that's all in the works. I talked to Matt today again, and we're fine in that part. And he'll do the T-ball shirts all in the same time. So it kind of saves money um, in that order. And Diane, you had mentioned uh, Marathon Sports way back, I think the last time we talked about this, they already had the calendars printed, but they are donating um, gift cards and I believe pairs of shoes, like certificates for pairs of shoes. So they're, they're right. helping us out a lot. Um, and I oh, have, good. yeah, I have someone who plays pickleball. Um, his name is Jack and he's he's on my little like, not race committee, but he's offered to help me do a bunch of stuff. So he was somehow had a contact yeah. through marathon sports and he, he's working on marathon. So they're all set to go, which will be great. That's um, cool. Yeah. And, um, it was probably a week ago. I got a phone call from a person who lives on Sylvia Heights. Um, <laughs> I know she uses the park all the time. She loves the park. She walks her dog there. Um, she just called as a very pleasant resident, knowing that I should probably know what's going on up at the park. So she told me oh. that people are using the Turka Park basically for this is Jennifer. Um, basically for like a dog waste walking park. And she said um, they had a big problem, I guess, last year on, on Sylvia Heights itself where they had to go around because people were like randomly going down and like not picking up after the dog. 
So they put out flyers and everything in their neighborhood. So I went up, I took a look around. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, like she said. Um, but I did order signs on Amazon and I went up and put four signs up there. And I don't know when I can get up there again, probably this, the end of this week, I'll go check and see how it is. Um, as far as I called the DPW to see what Scott, if he had any suggestions because of like the parking lot, like where the dike is, because that's where another, you know, people bring their dogs up there and don't pick up after them. And he said the only thing that sort of helped was they bought one of those rainfall water trash cans, but he says people still are too lazy and just even just throw the bag on the ground and don't even put it into the trash can. Oh, wow. So he said that might work. Um, the trash cans are expensive, but I know a couple of people in that neighborhood. I actually talked to her last weekend at basketball to see if she noticed anything. Cause she and her young son go to the park a lot. And she said that they used to have a Zaturka park, like, um, like friends of Zaturka park. I don't know if anyone remembers that. The it last like, one is gone. There was 88 that signed the petition and now there's zero. Wow. So she was like, I'd be willing, and I'm sure people in the in the neighborhood would be willing to basically pitch in and raise money for this trash can, which is about Scott sent me the one that he he would want up there because he would have to his guys would maintain the trash, essentially. If I got the trash can that he suggested, then his guys would go up and empty it like once a week. So it's about between five and $600 for this like industrial type of uh, trash can. So that's something to think about. If the signs don't work, um, I told him I would get back in touch with him and then we could maybe revisit it at our next meeting and see how it goes. Um, but I never really thought to go up there in the winter to see what's going on. But yeah, so I went up and people are using it as a dog. Well, park. that's what I, yeah, I was going to say, how did you feel? Because someone's, I mean, not that I want dog poop anywhere in where kids are running, et cetera, but I wanted, you know, your opinion to think of what you thought, you know, I mean, someone could be like, you know, watching people all day with nothing better to do and going like, I see these, you know. But if you yeah. think there's an issue, you know, I mean, when I went up, I, I walked the whole park. Um, I walked off this park. I walked into the wood chips. Um, I was expecting like the ultimate worst. Like I really was. I didn't feel like it was that, that bad, but I also don't know because I had talked to her and this other person who is the neighbor who lives across the street and they possibly could have gone and cleaned up some of it because she says she has done that in the past. So I don't know if maybe they went up. I don't know. Um, but I'll go up again and I put it on social media, what the signs look like and a friendly reminder and all that, that it's not a dog park and please clean up after your dogs and things like that. But Scott just, you know, he just said it's, there's only like so much you can do, but I mean, maybe the, he said the trash can could be great or it could be bad because People can just show up there and start dumping the trash there because there's well, I know, so I know. It's like a double-edged sword, kind of. That's what he can we threat? Can we threaten like you know that we have video cameras, ring or something? You know, I don't. I'm just kind of talking out of my thoughts here, not you know. I, mean, I don't. I mean, people. I mean, you know, if I was walking my dog and I was letting it poop already, I mean, I would think it's a pretty open area, you know. I know, and actually. The neighbor to the left, so the yellow house up on the hill, um, I know he has a little dog um, and he's very nice. I've met him a couple of times and I was hoping to run into him because I think he's retired and I know he's he's home a lot to see what his thoughts were. I mean, he would be one to ask, too, if, you know, the neighbors see people who are just like pulling in and right. I asked both people like I was like do you see like cars like where are these people coming from are they walking up Huntington are they coming from different neighborhoods because it's kind of like you have to either like walk pretty far up Huntington or you have to live nearby to kind of get there you know what I mean 
So they didn't really know. So I'm just like, I don't know. And when I pulled in, there was like, just like this random, random guy. I don't even know what he was doing, to be honest. And then when I got out of my car, he kind of just like walked away and left. So I don't know. It's, it's very interesting. If it continues to get worse, we'll just make it a no dog park and we'll go through the select board and make it no dogs. And if we see anybody up there with dogs, because the last thing you want is for your kids to be playing and getting covered in dog poop. So you know what? If they can't be adults about it and pick up after their dog, they can't bring them there anymore. And, you know, we'll make it a fine. That's kind of what he said. You know, that's like the that's probably like the ultimate thing that you would have to do is just make it no dogs. And you'd have to kind of like it's he's like, it's just hard to like monitor it. He's like, you can't just like sit there all day and no, like no. monitor it. You know what I mean? But but- if you have the police go up there on their normal drives by and they find somebody, write them a ticket, word will spread fast. Yeah. So, you know, um, I was glad she called because like I said, in the winter, I, I kind of didn't really think to even go up there to see what's going on. But, um, I did and we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully um I'll just check it, you know, once in a while and just see how it's how it's going. And hopefully people just are can be responsible. Um Yeah, I mean I, I like those ideas. I mean, we have a um mem- we have a community member not on video, um, <laughs> that's with me <laughs> and my mom and she was saying, Yeah, like they're the guy one one of her store manager friends over at CVS you know, said, you can't imagine the stuff we're getting in the trash here, you know, and I said, yeah, I'm sure a lot of college students are using it as their receptacle, you know, and so that's when she was hearing, you know, the trash receptacle, she's like, yeah, I could see people abusing that too. Right. Don't you say? Yeah. <laughs> I know. So I know, Scott, I, I, I had a great conversation with him and I know it's like, it's one, it's like inviting people to stop there and ditch stuff and then I mean, essentially that would become not his problem, but he, I mean, he would, he's willing to take that on, but we would have to buy the trash can. And then the other side is if it gets too bad, then, you know, I don't know. Um, Like Jim said, we'd probably have to enforce no dogs and put it at the select board. And then just, I'd have to, you know, take further action with the police department and just say that. I mean, there's no dogs here at school either. And yet when I go out in my backyard, I see a resident who has his dog off leash down in the soccer field and every, almost every night. And he just lets the dog run and run and run and run and run. So it's, it's interesting because I mean, there's, there's, I mean, it's a law. There's no dogs at school. Never mind what he's letting the dog do. So I don't know. I just wanted to let you all know that the signs are up there and if it gets worse, then um, obviously we can reconvene and I'll revisit and then we'll go to the select board if, if need be. Um, is it, is that okay with everyone? Yeah. Sounds yes. good. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I, could, I can't figure out how to turn this off and on on my phone, okay. but I, I think that those, um, those water bottles that you mentioned. Yeah, I think they're a great idea. And I think they're great motivational things. And I even got someone a corny one for like a significant birthday. And they're like, no oh, yeah. one of those and I use it all the time. So, you know, people do like that type of thing. You know, you may not buy it for yourself, you know? Right. Yep. Great um, idea. And then updates, um, the Valentine's Day event that I actually, I didn't, I, I booked myself way too much on that Saturday, um, but I work with Emily. She's the new uh, child coordinator at the library. She's awesome. Her husband is one of our first and second grade coaches. So I wasn't able to make it to the library event for the Valentine's Day card making, but 36 people attended and she said it was great. It was like the same thing we did for Christmas. Um, I bought some of the supplies. So it was kind of like a joint event. And I will deliver the cards because uh, Hadley at Elaine uh, reached out to her and asked her if we could bring cards there again, because I guess it was a big hit at Christmas. So that was great. Um, 
36 people was like almost double of what we did for the Christmas one. Um, so I will deliver them on Wednesday, for Valentine's Day, if not tomorrow. Um, let's see. I'm working with the Key Club um, on more events for their community hours because the kids are getting down to crunch time for when they're starting to freak out and need to get hours. Um, so I have connected with Ruth Ann and she's sending me kids my way. So I'll put them to work for like the Easter egg hunt, uh, maybe even the race. Um, I can use them, which would be a great thing for them to be involved in. And so that's good. Um, the Easter egg hunt, the eggs, now they're actually, they're here. All the eggs are here. I have close to 5,000 Easter eggs because that's what people told me to order. So I have close to 5,000 Easter eggs. Um, I bought some that were pre-filled, I guess you could call them. And some I bought bulk candy and I stuffed them myself. I just did a little here, a little there, a little there. So we have a mixture of both. There's some candy and some, there's some like not chintzy little toys, but I got a great deal from this company that just does Easter eggs. And it was, it was awesome. So my office is literally stacked in boxes full of Easter eggs. Um, so I'm thinking if it's nice out, I don't know if, how this was done in the past, but I was thinking if it was nice out, we do it outside. And if it's not nice out, I don't know what I'm going to do with 5,000 eggs with children in the gym. Yeah, we tend to always do it outside. Yeah. yeah. Um, only in severe weather, real cold. We've done it inside. Okay. Um, and I have uh, Mike Spanknable on board with uh, bringing the Easter Bunny. I have the Easter Bunny all set up. So that's good with Lauren. Um, I had one question about, is this our actual event or is it a joint event with the police department? Well, it's our event, but it has very much changed over the years because of, you know, I guess either us not having a director or interim directors or things like that. And that's where, you know, like I have voiced in the past that I'm like, I'm afraid we're losing ownership of stuff. And yeah. I, you know, I don't know how, you know, alert you were when we, you know, when you weren't involved in Park and Rec, but we had to fight for our viability for a while. Um, you know, I think that we've kind of now got better standing and stuff like that. And, you know, things, things seem more stable. I think it was probably more of the North Hadley hall stuff that, okay. you know, even brought more light to stuff. But in, in the other part of this is that Lauren loves to do this and Lauren is good at this, you know, so she loves doing it. And mm -hmm. then, <clears throat> kind of it starts to become a mutual name or something like that and that's where like when Jenny was with us and stuff that I was worried that we were losing ownership of this stuff that's what I just wanted to ask because I'm feeling like that's happening a little bit already so I just wanted to make sure that it was a park and rec acknowledged event because most of the legwork will be done you know, mutually by Park and Rec. It came from our budget and most of the stuff is pretty much already done. So yeah, I just wanted to make sure not that like, I don't want it to seem like I want a pat on the back, but I also don't want it to shift in other ways where it could be yeah. taken, away it's taken away. Yeah. Someone else's event, really. I, I mean, I feel like like they, we always had a good partnership relationship with the safety complex people, <clears throat> you know, excuse me. And they, um, they would help our events out, you know, doing things that we couldn't do, block off roads, you know, designate areas, take the fire truck out, all that type of stuff, you know, like for the Christmas one, for example. But I feel like more and more we're losing it. I think um, I both guys feel Steve might know from a longevity point because his kids participated in this stuff when they were kids. And Marley was our, you know, helper for 
some of those those events. Yeah, yeah. No, I really, I really feel that that's our our strong point that we've consistently offered these things, and I want to keep our our name on it, you know, and, and our ownership. And um, I don't know. I think we've got the good team on board um, to get stronger and be more. I don't know, not more vocal, but just. You know, keeping that interest going, keeping it at the park and rec name. And I, I, I still want to bolster um, like a chicken to go. And now that you've got you guys had the ski things going and and all that, I think we're on the upward trend, you know. Sounds good to me. And um, uh, tracing back to the safety uh, complex. So I've already talked to Chief Mason about uh, looping back to the 5K. And he said, whatever I need, I just let him know. And they have it. He's got it and he's, it's fine. It's great. He's willing to help, you know, in any way we need. And I already have uh, the safety plan because I have to have a safety plan in route for the race. So um, I have to have an official meeting with uh, Mike and Evan and Mike, I believe. So they're all on board. I just have to tell them. And whenever we all three of us or four of us can get together. So they're very, they're, they're very receptive receptacle. I appreciate that. And I thank them all the time. So, um, and it's helpful that we have these department head meetings because I get to see them once a month all together. So it's helpful if I have something to be like, Hey, can you, I see them in person. It's just easier than sometimes inundating people with emails. So I think that will be good. Um, and Mike's all set for the Easter bunny. I think I said that. So that should be great when that time gets closer. Um, and finally, the build, building use form for our summer soccer. Uh, thanks to Jim handling that while I was away for <laughs> a couple days. Um, I think we have it uh, all set. Is that safe to say, Jim? Maybe. You were on vacation? Um, yes, I, I got it all set, but in the process, just so Steve and Diane are aware, I may or may not have upset some people. No way. <laughs> so, um, because I'm of sorry, the conditions, I, hear you, but I guess it was funny. <laughs> um, yeah. So because of the conditions last year where Amy had to, um, we paid what it was over three thousand dollars to the school system last uh, year, yeah. and we had to. Amy had to go in and do the trash, clean the bathroom, put in toilet paper because yeah. the 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 it wasn't kept up with. Um, and so my plan this year was to hire our own janitor. Um, and that way we could make sure that that happened, but that was going to mean a reduction in what we paid the school department for the use. They're going to be there anyways, uh, the janitors doing cleaning and stuff, but if they don't have to worry about this and we have a janitor that's going to come in and make sure that the bathrooms are clean and use, you know, sanitary for the people. I mean, the trash was overflowing. If you guys remember, there was no toilet paper in some of them. There was, I mean, it was gross. And then the cafeteria, every time they went in in the morning, there was stuff in the way that they had to move out of the way because the janitors just kept on putting it in the way. Um, and I, I don't think that that was on purpose. I just don't know that they had another spot to put it. But long story short, they they had to move things around. So now we've got somebody that we're going to pay and we've worked it out because uh, Principal Dowd got involved and she and I, and I'm sure you guys want to be able to offer this because, um, you know, it's, it's a big thing in town. They get a lot of kids to go to this camp. Um, they employ some of our teenagers as counselors and instructors and um, stuff like that. And he said, Jim, I'll be honest with you. Uh, this is Chris, and he said, I'm about ready. Just East Hampton's offering me everything, and I don't have to pay them anything. He said, but I like Amherst. He said, I liked Hadley area because 
it's so central and there's so many more kids, I think, that would come here than would go to East Hampton. And But East Hampton's offered him the world and not charging him anything. Like, it's, it's, it's crazy. And he wants to pay us and stay here rather than go to East Hampton. And so, I, I mean, I know that he's a little demanding, but when you're paying that kind of money, I think you kind of earn that right to be a little demanding. Um, and so, and it was, so long story short, it's going to be, we were talking about it and I said, hey, listen, Amy felt horrible. I felt horrible. Steve and Diane felt horrible that you paid the amount of money. It was over $4,000 that he paid to us in the school. Um, so we're going to take, I said 3,800. He said, how about we call it four? And he's going to do the, the field painting himself. Um, so that's a huge thing that we don't have to do. So we have to pay a thousand dollars to the school system for the, the building use because it's still for profit, even though it's a park and rec sponsored event, it's for profit. So they feel like they got to get something. And, uh, the principal, spoke with the superintendent and they agreed on a thousand dollars and asked if that was okay. And I said that that was more than okay. Um, so okay. what we're going to do for those first, and we have to find one kid for, and we don't have to go out to hire. If we were paying for it through our budget, we would have to open it up to everybody and then pick someone, but we don't have to because Chris is essentially paying for it. So we can just, uh, Montero is paying for it. So we can just pick whoever we want. Um, and so there's that, but the first two weeks, the person that I had in mind, and I think Amy has in mind is available. The one in August, he may not be available. So we might have to find somebody else. And I think principal Dowd might have someone interested. She might. Yeah there may be somebody that she could grab for us. So um, either way, I, I think it's going to work out best for everybody. And it doesn't have to be an all day thing The we don't yeah. need a, a cleanup person there from eight o'clock until five o'clock. That would, I think would be a huge waste of money. I think that if they're there from 10 or 11 until five or six, make sure everything's cleaned up, the, everything's good. Then they don't need to be there at the beginning of the day, the next day. Um, but yeah, that's, it, it finally got worked out. Cause you know, I, I called, uh, the business manager and he said, well, I know Amy's been calling me about it, but it's not really a priority. I have a lot of other things going on. And I said, well, I understand it's not your priority, but it's our priority because he's got offers to go to East Hampton. And if we don't get him an answer, that's where they're going. Because yeah. the day that I was speaking to him, UMass had already opened up their soccer camp. So, you know, parents are already looking for places to put their kids during the summer when they have to work. So he wanted to get it open as soon as possible. And I let him know that it was a priority for us. And I give him credit. Within a day and a half, he got us a number that we could work with, and he got us an answer. So it worked out good. Sounds good to me. Great. Thank you. Thank you for the efforts. And I did uh, reach back out to Chris uh, M and he, his mom got very sick. So that's why he hasn't gotten back to me. Cause I offered to post a registration on our end to help him out. So as soon as he can, he's going to get back to me with that information. Um, and that's where I left it with him. Yeah, he said he had a flyer or something he was going to send to you that we would yeah. post for him. And... Mm -hmm. So I'll do that as soon as he sends it to me. And right. I think that's all I have right now. The race was the big thing. The Easter Bunny is the next big thing. But that will be, um, that's pretty much, that will be easy. What's the, the date of the Easter Bunny thing? The 23rd of March. 23rd of March. 10.30. Okay. 10.30. Cool. Thank I'll you. Have a, a group of uh, Hopkins kids and then whoever else wants to help spread spread eggs. 
perfect. Nice. Yeah. And I will keep everyone updated as far as um, the race is concerned, as far as sponsors, things like that. And uh, T-Ball, I have, it's like to be determined, but I'm going to try to line it up, um, Jim, with the opening day, obviously, of Cal Ripken. But obviously, it'll be, we'll have to see how the rest of the winter goes. So I already have, um, I believe, 20 littles signed up for T-Ball already. Wow. Dang. I know. it's there. This group is awesome. I'm telling you, the first and second graders. Hey, Sully. Hi. The uh, first and second grade group, be, just because, like, I work with them the most. They are, they're, they're like, you're stuck with us for the next 18 years. It's pretty funny. That's what they say to me every Saturday. So, um, so yeah, they're very, they're very eager to um, find more things for their kids to do. So um, I already have coaches lined up and it, it'll be great. I have three coaches that already said they want to do it. So T-ball will be great. Brilliant. Yeah. So maybe Jim, nice. if uh, I'm sure I'll hear, but if you can just remind me about when opening day is set for Cal Ripken, then I'll make sure the parents. Do you already have it? I think it so. Open? Let me look at the calendar. Because I remember last year it got rained out. I want to say it's going to be the reason I wanted the field done by April 1st. Yeah, which is a Monday, is because it. I think it's April sixth. Six, okay. And that would give us a week buffer okay. for them to do any finish up work. Okay. But I wish we'd stop getting these snowstorms so they could just get it done. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, so so he's very happy about the snowstorm though, because they've already canceled school. I know, no school, no town hall, no business, no. That's it. Yeah. Everybody stay home. Um, does anybody else, does anybody have any questions or anything you want me to do or concerns, upcoming things, nothing, old no, business, new business, no. nada. Okay. Well, that's all I have at 622. Motion to close the meeting. Yep. I said Thank you, Amy. Thank you, You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Bye.